Welcome to the second signing ceremony of today, signature of the Memorandum of Understanding of the European Sky Shield Initiative. We will start with opening remarks by Lead Nation Germany. Minister, floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear colleagues, dear Deputy, Deputy Secretary General. Since the beginning of uh, the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine, we witness how important capable air defense SSR, SSR every day. Sadly, the ruthless and devastating terrorist attacks against Israel proved this fact a truth. The Hamas used massive rocket attacks to prepare and disguise their despicable and murderous attacks against innocent civilians. These attacks show us that even non-state actors can challenge one of the world's most capable air defense postures. Against this backdrop, the European Sky Shield Initiative with now 19 participating nations is a clear sign that we are strongly committed to counter these threats. Therefore, I highly appreciate your presence, colleagues, today. With the Cooperative Procurement Framework, MOU, we set the next milestone on our way to a more capable and interoperable, interoperable European air defense within NATO. As ESSI will deliver important enhancements to NATO's air defense posture, I'm very happy that the Deputy Secretary General has joined us today. Thank you for that. So before we will sign the MOU, I have the honor to hand over to Mr. Jana. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Pistorius, dear Boris, uh, uh, dear ministers, uh, good evening and welcome everyone. As the minister has said, every day we witness the devastation caused by Russian missiles and drones raining down on Ukraine. And now in Israel, where Hamas rockets have brought destruction and terror, we can see the brutal reality of war and the need to develop our own effective air and missile defenses. This is the idea at the heart of the European Sky Shield Initiative, for all participating nations to jointly procure air and missile defense systems using interoperable off-the-shelf solutions. This multinational approach offers a flexible and scalable way for nations to strengthen their capabilities in an efficient and cost-effective way, as part as NATO integrated air and missile defense. A year ago, Defense Minister signed a letter of intent here at NATO HQ, and I'm delighted to join you once more as you sign the Memorandum of Understanding, taking the European Sky Shield Initiative to the next level. This summer in Vilnius, NATO heads of state and government agreed to enhance NATO's deterrence and defense posture, including our integrated air and missile defense. They agreed to the rotational presence of modern air defense systems and capabilities across SACUR's area of responsibility. And they agreed to further improve capabilities, notably for air surveillance, interception, and command and control. The European Sky Shield Initiative under Germany's leadership shows the value of allies stepping up to meet NATO's requirements while ensuring interoperability and integration. This initiative therefore helps translate allied commitments on defense spending on into tangible capabilities available for our collective defense. It demonstrates the clear commitment of European allies to fair burden sharing as well. On behalf of NATO, I want to thank you, dear Boris, dear Minister, for your leadership, for your country's leadership, and for all you present here today for your commitment to this initiative to keep our one billion citizens safe. I very much look forward to seeing this initiative growing further. I would like to invite the Defense Minister to sign the Memorandum of Understanding, and I look forward to seeing, as I mentioned, even more allies uh, in the near future. Thank you all. And now I would invite all the officials to get up for a family photo. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. This concludes the signing ceremony. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Um, good evening and welcome to the signature of the note of joining to the Memorandum of Understanding of NATO Flight Training Europe. This will be 
a very short ceremony. We will start with opening remarks by the NATO DSG, followed by opening remarks by um, the Belgian Minister of Defense in their role as lead nation for this project. We will then invite the officials to please sign the documents and we will then finish it all off with a small family photo. And now, without further ado, DSG, floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening. Uh, bon soirée à tous et à toutes. Welcome to the first of the two signing ceremonies uh, that we'll have uh, today. First of all, let, me, uh, let us turn to the joining ceremony for NATO Flight Training Europe. For this, I would like to welcome the Minister of Defense of Belgium, Ludovine uh, de Donder. Ludovine, uh, la Belgique, c'est la lead nation, et c'est très important uh, de vous avoir avec nous. Thank you so much for leading this important initiative. I would like also to welcome the German Defense Minister, uh, Boris Pistorius, and Secretary of State Grand Shapps, uh, the United Kingdom, who are both joining this initiative today. NATO's strength comes from our unity, our posture, and the related forces and capabilities and from systematically training together and, and forging trusting relationships in the process. This carries particular importance at a time when we need to ensure the executability of our defense plans. NATO Flight Training Europe, or NFTE, is an excellent example of this. This important multinational effort will help us develop a shared approach to training the next generations of air crews. While this initiative may still be in its early stages, we have already seen remarkable results. Since the beginning of this year, the number of uh, NFTE training campuses has already more than doubled, with campuses in Czechia, Greece, Hungary, Italy, and North Macedonia. The breadth of training available has also increased. After initial focus on fighter jet training, helicopter training is now included, with further opportunities to others being offered soon. And the NATO Support and Procurement Agency has put structures in place to reliably match training slots with students. This first batch of pilots are scheduled to be announced before the end of the year. All of this is only scratching the surface of what NATO Flight Training Europe will deliver in the future. I very much welcome the decision by Germany and United Kingdom to join this effort. Your countries both bring a high level of expertise, sophistication, and will also, I believe, benefit from being a part of the framework that delivers real value to all participants. Uh, let me now give the floor to the Belgian Defence Minister, Le Devine de Donder, as lead nation of the NATO Flight Training Europe. Je vous en prie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, dear uh, colleagues, the best colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honour and a, a privilege for myself and for Belgium as NFTA lead nation to represent our current NFTA members at this uh, signing ceremony. Belgium has always been a firm believer in the virtues of collaboration, synergies, <coughs> exchange of experience, and economies of scale between NATO member countries. Belgium already fully outsources the advanced training of its fighter, transport, helicopter, and remote pilots to the national or multinational training centers of NATO's partners. We are not alone in relying on international training centers, and we all feel certain shortfalls in the training slots available. We are all aware of the need to create more and better training opportunities in Europe, and in doing so, to contribute to sharing the burden and experience of aircrew training. This sharing of experience and assets enables the development of innovative solutions to the limitation encountered. Synergies reduce transaction and training costs, improve efficiencies, enable demanded investment decisions, and ultimately increase training capacity. In order to achieve these ambitious goals, we must continue to expand the NFTA's membership. That's why I warmly welcome the addition of the UK and Germany. Your experience, capabilities and expertise in crew training will greatly enhance NFTA's future efforts. Your decision to join the NFTA will surely inspire other states and we look forward to that. 
As chairman of the NFTA steering committee and on behalf of all NFTA members, I invite all other NATO members who are not yet members to join the NFTA so that together we can further enhance the remarkable momentum and results of the NFTA. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you very much. I would now invite the officials to sign the document in front of them. And to round it all up, I would now invite everyone to get up in front of the backdrops for a small family photo. Many thanks. This concludes our first signing ceremony. We're going to take a 10-minute break before we continue with the European Sky Shield Initiative, also here in Room 5. <laughs>